Do you have a TS1 NEMA style traffic signal controller, but no way to power this device without being at a traffic signal controller cabinet? Well, today I'm gonna show you how to wire up one of these cables here, a NEMA style A connector, to get power to this device at any given time. I don't know how it works. We're trying to do tactics on a controller and you don't want to have to put the intersection in the flash just to pull data off of one device and upload it onto another the entire time. So today I'm going to show you how to wire up your own cord. One thing you're going to need is an old traffic signal controller cabinet that you can rip one of these cords out of or just buy one of these connectors. They are kind of expensive though. So if you have an old signal controller cabinet laying around and you're planning on giving it away, turn that thing into a smoker or something like that, well, make sure you save this cord right here. And let me show you what exactly to do to get power to that device. So I will show you inside of the manual for the M60s or any of these devices, it'll show you the NEMA A style connector device layout and pin layout. I can show you on my computer right here. I'll try to make a screenshot of that, but I have the entire pin layout. This is also in the user manual. It's probably the only helpful information that you'll find in that user manual or you'll only find a lot of the hardware stuff. You won't find anything to do with the user interface of these controllers, uh, but we do have the pin layouts. So you got this cable here and the next thing you're going to need is some kind of power cable, just a three conductor, three prong connector uh, power cable. This one's like a power supply for a PC or a lot of devices that go inside of that controller cabinet but we're gonna cut this end off. Go ahead and get our cable cutters here, and we're gonna take this end right here and just snip it right off. We don't need it anymore. Put those to the side. Now, on both cables, let's go ahead and strip back enough so that we can end up splicing these three conductors onto the power, the neutral, and the ground on this connector here. All right, so we have it stripped, no nicks on our cable. Let's pull that out, get that thing out of the way. See me shaking a lot. Well, I just chugged a pre-workout, did a workout, and uh, still got a little bit of a jitters from that. But we have our cable stripped back here. Now we need to strip back our NEMA connector here. So let's go ahead and do that. This one should be easy to strip. Looks like I need to sharpen my knife. I will, I will say that. All right, let's get all that pulled out. Let's get the uh, protectant, the plastics and stuff out of that. It does come with these little pull strings in here. Let's get our scissors and cut those back. We won't need them. All right, now we have all these cables right here, all these logics, powers, everything. This one is nice, it's color-coded. Usually won't have any of these color-coded. They'll usually just be all blue cables in here. Now, what we're gonna do, because you know, you got a bunch of different mixed up cables here. You don't know which one's your AC line. You don't know your neutral and you don't know your ground. So what we're gonna do is hook a meter up to it. Let's go ahead and get our Klein meter out. Get it out the bag real quick. And now we need to set this meter up here to continuity. Once, once you have it set to continuity, what I like to do, just make sure you're leads are hooked up good and you'll touch your two leads together and you can hear the ringing over there it means it's checking for continuity and it's completing that now we can look up our pin connector layout diagram and we know what we need to find so we need to find the earth ground the ac neutral and the ac line well on this diagram it shows right here our neutral is u and it's all labeled on these nema style connectors there's a bunch of labels inside this this connector here. So I know for you, I need to stick my meter in right up top. Should be enough to stick the meter in. Now it might be tedious, but we can go through all these pins and just check for continuity. All right. So we found the neutral, which is this solid green cable. And again, I want to do this. Obviously I could just open up this connector, probably see the color code figure it all out by that. A lot of these connectors and newer cabinets and style like that, you're just gonna have a bunch of blue cables coming out of it. And you may have a different color code, but I wanna just show it the way that you can do it on any style of these connectors. So we got our neutral found out. Uh, next, we're gonna look for our earth ground, which is V. 
So let's stick this back into V, one lead into that. Start touching around for it. And there you go, that's our earth ground. Old V right here. It's a black and white cable in here. Our green one is a neutral. Let's pull those down now. Now we're gonna be looking for the AC line. And on this diagram, it shows you it is a lowercase p. So on this connector, you're gonna look for the lowercase p. All right, so we have our p on the connector. Let's go ahead and stick our one lead into the p. All right, there we go. We just found the P, which is this orange cable, and that's gonna be our AC line. We got our neutral, which is the green one, and our ground, which is the white black. There's not much of a color code for these, but these are the three cables we're looking to, to have. We'll end up trimming the rest whenever we test it and make sure it works. Now, we're gonna take this cable here and butt splice it into these three cables here. So let's get to doing that. Pull out our box here, we'll be using these red butt splices, should work fine. All right, we got these wire strippers here. Let's use these to strip back a little bit of the cable here, and then we'll use it to strip back our power supply cable. We'll get it all hooked up, wired in, and see if she works. Strip one. All right. Got our three cables stripped back on this. Now let's go ahead and do the same on the power supply. Strip back. Now if you look up the color code to this power supply, you'll know that the green and yellow is gonna be your earth ground, blue is gonna be your neutral, and the brown is gonna be your hot. And that's pretty common with these three colors. Now we're gonna take three of our butt splices here, and we're gonna splice on these butt splices to the cable, the power supply, and to the NEMA connector. Just one. Your mouth is a tool, know that. All right, crimp her down, do a little tug test on that side, that side, and this side. We're good on this end. Now, as we remember, on our NEMA connector, we have orange is hot, white black is ground, and green is going to be our AC neutral. So let's hook that up. These cables are good and twisted. Ooh, that pretty workout definitely got me shaking, though. Go ahead and crimp her down real good. Make sure to do a little tug test, too. These small cables are known to pop out. Best route would probably be to solder these up. And, uh, and then tape it all up real well. But, just wanna get it working for you guys. Okay, our white black is gonna be our ground. Go ahead and feed that into our butt splice here. Down real good, do a tug test. Make sure you didn't get just jacket. All right, and then we had green for our neutral. Make sure you get a nice crimp. Push down on it pretty tight. There we go, we got butt spliced, our three lines that we need. Make sure you tape up the rest of these. You won't need them on our other cables. Let's tape those up for now. Make sure they ain't really touching each other and touching stuff they don't need to touch. Everything else is low voltage. I mean, 120 is low voltage as well, but here we go. Before we go plugging it in and everything, we can go ahead and check this guy and just make sure our connections are fine. Go ahead and set your meter back to continuity. Keep it back in there. Let's pull this guy up real quick. You know the big lead here on your power cord is your ground. Make sure we don't have any loose neutrals or grounds or anything. Where did we say V was? Right. There we go. Our ground is V. Let's check our neutral side. All right, now we need to check our neutral, which is U. 
got continuity. And let's check our hot side on our cable here. And that is P, where do we have P somewhere in the middle? And that's P. Boom, there we go. We got continuity, our cable, our splices are good. It's a good way to always check your, your work as you go as well. Before we go hooking up everything so you don't burn up anything. Now, let's take this guy and plug her in. Got her plugged in now. This cable is ready to go. We can plug in our NEMA controller. Let's go ahead and pop our controller up here on our lap. Probably make a noise. And there we go. We got power to this device. I wish this one was audible. Uh, and there we go, yep. Got all our main menu screens on. And you now have, I'm gonna try to get some lighting going to it. May help out the screen. But now you have a power cable to power up your NEMA device. And you can do tactics on this device. You can do everything like that that you want. As you can see, we do have power. Can go through the menu options, ring timers. There you go. Uh, you got everything. You got everything you need that's set up on this device. You now have a power cable that you can hook up to and get your work done, get tactics done, installed. You know, this controller set up for the intersection you're putting it at and have it ready to go. You can sit there and power your little mock intersection, anything you want. Obviously, for the field techs, that's the way you really want to go. You always want to have one of these power cables here and handy with you. We had an old cabinet laying around. I cut this cable out of and went ahead and uh, made a cable. If this helps somebody, you definitely want to end up getting yourself one of these connectors, one of these cables. Keep it in your work truck. This thing is about essential. If you're swapping out a lot of traffic signal controllers and you're upgrading stuff, you pretty much want to have one of these. You, you got to have one of these in your truck. Um, so make yourself one. I hope this video helps you in learning and teaching you how to do this. Uh, I'm going to try my best to keep teaching everybody anything of my knowledge in traffic signal field. So that, that just helps out everybody in the industry. A lot of this stuff doesn't come with very good information on it or little guides or diagrams or anything like that, that to go off of. You know, they would either want you to take a class or it's all field experience. So hopefully these videos help some of you signal techs out there on troubleshooting, on how to set up stuff, how to do whatever. Uh, I'll try to make a video here soon on tactics and we'll get a whole thing going on that so that y'all know how to do all that. And if you have any requests of any kind of signal field things that you guys want to learn on, please ask away and I'll try my best to get to it. And obviously, now that we have our cable, we verified that it works. We know our hookups and our connections are good. Always triple check yourself. Let's go ahead and tape up this cord. Make it look real nice and neat, waterproof. Obviously, you don't wanna be doing controller stuff or a lot of the cabinet stuff in the rain unless it's absolutely necessary. And if you do so, use an umbrella. Make sure you don't get a lot of water inside of the uh, cabinet at the same time. But just so we don't have anything short out, I just had my tape in front of me. This controller is probably covering it up. But we can go ahead and tape up our cable here. And just to state, this cable alone, if you're trying to get one of these adapter cables, uh, AC power to one of these NEMA connectors, you're looking to spend a couple hundred dollars. So if you got a signal controller cabinet that's sitting out there, I, this one I pulled out from a cabinet a transit cabinet that was from 1978, I wanna say. Never gonna be reused in the field. We're literally gonna junk it out, either scrap the thing or make a smoker out of it or something like that. Uh, so if you have an old signal controller cabinet, make sure you get the parts out of it. You know, take your jumpers off, you know, keep that stuff in the truck. Uh, your little ground bars, your bus bars, everything like that that's in there, your power adapters. Uh, anything that works good in old cabinets before you junk them and scrap them, make sure you rip out the stuff. It wouldn't even be a bad idea to have a, a backboard laying around uh, that you can just kind of mock up stuff with and so on. But one of these cables is a couple hundred dollars or go out to your warehouse, find your stuff, save a lot of money and get some work done. Thanks for watching.